Creators, Carrie Silly here and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Creative Life Studios. I'm really excited to be part of this really cool mixed media mania YouTube hop that we have going on. Before I start anything, I just want to tell our sponsors, thank you so much for all the awesome prizes that you guys have donated. Um, we've got stuff from, I've got a list, um, from Seven Dot, All in Create, Amazing Casting, Blitzy, Canvas Core, Carabel, DecoArt, Gel Press, Marabou, Ranger, Thermoweb, Umwow, and Viva Las Vegas Stamps. Thank you guys so much. And what's really cool is you have a ton of chances to win stuff. So at every stop that you go to, leave a comment down below saying your name and what country you're from. And from every stop, you'll have a chance to win um, something from Umwow, a digital prize, and some stamps from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. And then out of the entire hop, all those other prizes are going to be pulled by our wonderful, wonderful coordinators. So there's some really, really cool prize packs in there. So I hope you will take the time and go check out all 25. I know it seems like a lot, but you have a week. So you've got plenty of time to a few a day. Have some fun. Maybe learn something new. Um, maybe revive an old technique you haven't used in a while. Um, for my video, I'm actually going to be using something from one of our sponsors, Gel Press. It's from actually my new Faith Impressions line with them that's coming out. So... Yay, super excited about that. Um, so you'll see more about that in the video, but I figured they're sponsors. Might as well use their stuff. Super cool, huh? Um, so we're very excited. One thing you do need to make sure, watch the video all the way through, so that when you get to the end, it'll tell you which video to go to next. Um, and then that way, we just did all the work for you, so you don't have to hop back and forth through a bunch of different videos. Literally, you're going to go from one video, it'll tell you where to go next, which will tell you where to go next, and around, 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 around. That's how that works. So again, I'm super excited to be part of this. Um, make sure you go and leave some love for all of these amazing sponsors that donated all this cool stuff for us and for you. Um, and all right, guys, let's get started. So if you're not familiar with one of these, this is a journaling Bible. So as you can kind of see, um, there's a little bit more uh, margins. Um, so it gives you a chance to take notes, sermon notes, use it as an actual journal. Um, or as you can see, let me flip back this way a little bit. Um, if you're like me, you get inky and painty and all sorts of stuffy. <laughs> um, what I did before we started, um, just to make life a little bit easier, is I went ahead and pre-prepped my page. I always like to do this so that my whatever medium I use doesn't soak through and mess up the back page behind it. Um, I also, for a little extra protection, put usually I put wax paper, but I'm out of wax paper, of course. Um, so just for a little added layer of protection. So on this page, I use Liquitex uh, Clear Gesso. A lot of people don't like this one because um, it has a little bit of a grit to it, a little bit of a tooth. Um, I happen to like it, so it's very much a personal choice. If this isn't your go-to, you don't like that gritty texture, um, I am looking for it as I'm talking and I cannot find it at the moment. But my other favorite is the Crafters Workshop makes a clear gesso. It's a little bit thicker. This one's pretty thin. Um, but it just uh, really smooth texture, really easy to go on, and you get like a huge container of it. Um, I must have taken it to a class or something because I can't find it at the moment. So um, I'm going to set this aside for just a second because we're I'm going to show you this technique that we're going to be using um, on just some regular white copy paper just so you can kind of get an idea. So what we're going to be using actually is part of my new line with Gel Press. Gel Press is one of our amazing sponsors. So whoever wins the petite set, I want to see what you make. Um, I'm always looking for gel press inspiration, but this one is actually part of my Faith Impressions line. So it's a line of gel press plates that are specifically designed and shaped to fit within margins of the Bible or for smaller projects or any of that kind of stuff. So if you're not familiar with gel press, you can kind of see it's this spongy, you can't really destroy it. Trust me, Sally has tried to destroy it many, many ways. Um, you can kind of see that this one is well loved because I've used it a lot. And even though you can see it's discolored a little bit, that doesn't affect my colors. I can still use whatever colors and it won't transfer. You can see I tend to le not clean it. <laughs> um, but I kind of like that because it'll, it'll add little, this is all acrylic paint. So when I pull stuff, it'll add little yummy bits from uh, to my other projects. It's like instant distressing and who doesn't love that? So today we're actually going to use a product that a lot of people don't know that you can use on your gel press plate um, and that is going to be some alcohol ink. So a lot of people think you can only use like water-based products. So your acrylic paints and um, your watercolors, your ink pads and that kind of stuff. But you can absolutely totally use these and I'm going to show you it's super super easy, super fun and you end up getting beautiful brilliant prints when we're done. 
So I'm going to take this, move that. So all you're going to need is Adirondack is what I'm using, um, but alcohol inks of your choice, um, a white acrylic. So I'm going to be using Deco Art, who is also a sponsor. Yay. Um, fluid acrylics. Um, I like it because when we get to that part, you really just need a thin layer of white acrylic and or any other light. So if you want to use a buff or a light pink or something like that, you can absolutely use that. Um, but you want a light coat and this makes it super easy to not overdo that. So we're really just going to start and I'm going to grab, let's see, I did some test colors, so I don't remember which one I like the best. So we're going to play, see what happens. All right, so this one is called Pool, so it's going to be one of my favorite colors, which is a good, nice little teal, and really, no rhyme or reason, we're just going to kind of sprinkle them in. Now, this is a light pink. I really wish I had the dark pink, which means um, I got a gift certificate or gift card from my mother-in-law, shout out to my mother-in-law, um, to Michael's for my birthday last month. And so I think that's what I'm going to buy because all the colors I have are either like earth tones or they are these light colors. And these were actually amazingly gifted to me by a friend who just wasn't using them. She's like, could you do anything with those? And I was like, um, I will absolutely take those off your hands. And she was so sweet. I offered to buy them, but she just gave them to me, which was so nice. All right. So as you can see, really no rhyme or reason. I just kind of put them on there. And so that one was cool, Perry lemonade pool and shell pink i feel like i'm having like this beach kind of theme going on without even intending to so here's what's going to make the difference in the way your colors go we don't want to roll like we would typically do with an acrylic paint we want to just kind of dab and what we're doing is we just want to kind of move the paints around mix them around just a little bit but as you can see i'm not doing full strokes i'm just kind of smushing it is that a good word just kind of doing that, and then we'll kind of brayer off, clean my brayer off a little bit. And even that's really pretty. Um, ooh, smell of alcohol ink in the morning. <laughs> so we're gonna give that just a second to kind of just dry a little bit. Um, if you're not again, if you're not familiar with gel press place, what's great is if you use your inks, if you use your acrylic paints or your alcohol inks and that kind of thing, you can then because of the response of it and the way you can kind of. Um, it gives, but then releases back to its original shape. You can use all sorts of things. You can use um, art foamies, which are fantastic. Ah, my art foamies are stuck together. Well, I was going to show you these, but they are stuck together, which I've never had happen. So I will deal with those later. Um, you can use regular foam stamps. You can use, um, these are texture cards from Faber-Castell. Um, this is one I made using a Tim Holtz die cut and sticky backed foam. So I wanted something honeycombing, or that's the negative of it. So all sorts of options for making textures and mixing paints and making all sorts of cool stuff. So that probably is more than done. I just get chatty sometimes. So what we're gonna do is then we're gonna take our white fluid. And again, you can use any other light color. You don't wanna use a dark color because then it's going to mute the colors of your alcohol ink that you put on, that you've already put on there. So what's this, what this has done is it has acted and kind of made an alcohol ink skin for lack of a better word. So what we want to do is we want to give that skin something to suction up to so that we can get it off our plate. And that's where the acrylic paint comes in. So it doesn't take a lot. And you can see there's a few still wet spots of alcohol ink, no big deal. So then here I am going to do just full strokes. And if I get a little too much, because the goal is you still want to be able to see some of that color underneath, then you know you have a thin enough coat. So I can still see my colors. Don't, like I said, don't need a heavy coat. It's more of a jacket, I guess, not a coat, not a parka. And then this is just plain... I don't even know what kind it is. Georgia Pacific basic copy paper, like Walmart, big ream for like three bucks or something. Um, so I'm just going to slap this on here and then just give it a nice little rub, you know, like it's Valentine's Day, your anniversary, whatever. <laughs> I make weird comments when I do this kind of thing. I think that's why I usually do just music and I don't talk. <laughs> 
So give it a nice little rubby dubby. You probably really don't even have to do it this much, but I want to make sure that I get something real pretty for you guys. And then you're just going to take it and you're just going to peel it back and you see how it's coming off. And so you end up with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful watercolor. Get a little closer. I mean, how yummy is that? And it took no work. It took no thought. You didn't have to think about where specifically should I place this? And what's great, this is already dry, which is awesome. And because we use those alcohol inks, now this background image is permanent. So when you do other projects um, or you want to layer, you want to add some texture paste, whichever you want to do, you're not going to have to worry about ruining that beautiful background because it's alcohol ink, it's permanent. So when all around, so here's a few others I did while I was playing. Um, that one's a little bit more muted. This is ones I, one I did. This one was fun because I tried all my lightest colors, so it really is super subtle, but you still get some great color. You get some of those little tidbits, like I said, like I, because I don't clean my plates. Um, and you get, you know, instant texture, like this little, I love this, this little pop of hot pink that was left over from another project. I mean, instant yum. This is one I did when I was teaching at Creativation. This one is just, is just uh, acrylic paint, but this one is alcohol ink, but I use all the a bunch of brights so like hot pink like a lemon yellow I think maybe a lime green or something blues and purples so I used a bunch of different and then you can see I used a like a beige I guess maybe off-white I'm not sure what the correct color is for the background so you can see how it adds just a whole new set of texture and whole new layers of fun so all right so those are our samples super super fun so now we're going to do that in our Bible I'm going to scoot my Bible over to this side. Now remember, I have already pre-prepped that page. Some people don't. I call them crazy. No, I'm just kidding. I, I guess I've just had too many times of like my Sharpie bleeding through my page. And then it makes me cringe when I go to do something on the back page. Because I'm like, ah, I can't take it. So, um, you know, to each his own or her own. So I am going to... I think I'm going to use the scalloped edge, so I'm just going to keep that in mind for when I get ready to flip it oval, um, that I make sure I get it in the right position. All right, so what colors did I use last time? Squirrel. Uh, I think I used this one, this one, this one, and this one. So let's try that again. That turned out to be a cool color combo. Again, what's great? Experiment. Play with it. Use, you know, cheap paper and find out the color combo that you, that you really like. So again, I'm just going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to start with my blue. La, 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 la. See, this blue is from the Brights collection, and I think that if you know me at all, <laughs> you know that the Brights collection is a little more in my, my creative wheelhouse. When I got ready for Creativation, I joked that I had an 80s flashback because I used... Um, uh, Delusions, um, her paint, and it was lemon yellow. I don't remember the exact colors, but it was like hot pink, lemon yellow, and like a turquoise color. And I was like, I feel like I'm having an 80s flashback because it was like all those bright, funky colors. So again, no real rhyme or reason, just having fun. And then we're going to lightly do a little, just smooth it around, a little dabby do. So nothing crazy. Just kind of, and what we're doing is we're just spreading that out so we create that watercolor effect and we're gonna it'll allow it to dry a little bit faster if it's not so thick. So super super fun. And Ranger happens to be one of our sponsors, so I know they're giving away some kind of prize pack. So maybe, just maybe, there'll be some alcohol ink in it and you might be able to do some super fun playing um, and try this technique out. Um, it's really great too if you have the larger gel press plates to make an entire watercolor background or a set of watercolor ATCs and it makes it so much faster. And what's great with this technique also is you're not using as much water as you would for your typical watercolors. So you're less likely or really not going to have at all any of the buckling and warping and that kind of stuff that sometimes happens if you overwater your watercolors, which I have a horrible, horrible tendency to do. All right. Get that a little love. It's probably fine, but all right. So then we're going to add our Deco Art Fluid Acrylic. 
And again, you can use any. I do prefer the fluid acrylics for this part just because you're less likely to over saturate, over paint. I don't really know what the right word for that is. So then we're just going to give a nice little rolly rolly. And if you feel like you do have too much, just hit your brayer over here for just a second. We're going to keep going and rubby, 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 painty, 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 brayer, brayer, brayer. And then I'm going to snag my Bible and I'm actually going to turn it this way just so I can see and line things up a little bit better. And what's great is there's a great little plastic acetate film on the back of this that makes a great little handle. If I can look and find it. So I'm just going to do this, line it up. Hopefully my hat's not getting in the picture. Line it up where I want it. Yeah, I'm pushing the paper by accident with my hand. Yeah. Boom. And most of the time I get it straight. If I don't, it's okay. It's not about perfection. Like if art had to be perfect, Picasso, we wouldn't even know his name, right? <laughs> So I always like to give it a nice little love pat just because, you know, look how pretty it looks on the back though. I mean, you can tell where my color, my, my color happy place usually is, is all these pretty colors. <laughs> all right. And then we're just going to take it and we're just going to do a little peel. Pretty. So because I use those light colors, obviously my background is very, very subtle and that's totally okay. So I'm going to lift it up so you can see it a little bit better. And you can see my, wish I would have put a little bit more dark down there when I did it, but that's totally okay. You can still see the scalloped edge really well, but look how pretty my watercolor background is. I am kicking myself because I have an additive that's silver that I'm really wishing I would have added to that because how pretty would that have been? All right, so we're going to give that a second. It should be probably dry, but you never know. So I always like to just give it a second for that acrylic background to, to dry. So now we're going to do, so um, I'm actually using, I had scripture picked out, now I can't find it. Oh, this, uh, so we are in Psalms 107, in case you want to know. Uh, verse 14 says, he brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and he broke away their chains. So that is the scripture I'm going to use as my reference. So I'm going to stop talking, and I'm just going to finish and add up some embellishments and probably some words and some letters and that kind of stuff. Um, and so... To make your life easier, I'm going to do a little fast forward through that part of it. So I hope you have enjoyed this, and um, I might come back on and talk at the end, but let's find out. All right, let's get to, let's get to decorating.